just realised how pink my cheeks look. Hmm. Weird. Weird. Hmm. Okay, anyway. <laughs> We've made it to Coventry, um, to our hotel for the night, and then we are off to the conference in the morning. Super excited. Don't really know what to expect, but looking forward to it loads. Um, yeah tired now it's just been a day of traveling really um from norwich to ely and ely to here um we just had some lunch at pizza express as per usual <laughs> and um i'm just about to i've done my avon order just about to have a shower uh before going to bed um exciting day tomorrow guys i'm all ready i've got my zebra dress on let's go do this <laughs> myself a better lunch than everyone else because I couldn't eat just rice for lunch. Um, I had some really interesting talks all about the new classification from Dr. Kaz Kaz um, and some talks from Cots UK and a new charity called Mars Cell Action and then just a very interesting talk from uh, a woman called Lisa Jameson about the impact of the nutrition um, on Ellis Danos and some upcoming research. I will talk to you more about them properly a little bit later. Um, and I can't wait to see what's, well, I can't wait to listen to what's going to happen this afternoon, but I will chat to you a bit later. Another day, another hotel. Um, this is the one where the conference is held, so that is a lot better. Hopefully the bed might be slightly more comfortable. <laughs> um, uh, so the programme of talks and lectures is finished for today. Uh, we had one by the occupational therapist Joe Southall and then just now we had um, Hannah Ensor who if you haven't heard me talking about before is um, the um, the brains behind Stickman Communications which I've talked about before um, in my um, What's in My Bag uh, video which has got th her um, communication cards, she's now doing status squares and loads of other bits and pieces that can help you uh, explain to other people uh, really quickly and efficiently what's going on um, but they also give you advice on pacing and that's what this this talk she was doing was about um, but a but a um, EDS and POTS um, lecture seminar conference is the only place you will find the lecturers lying on the floor afterwards or lying on tables to give their their lectures um but everyone's got a mutual understanding so it's great i wish i i will eventually build that up at uni so when i'm just um lying in strange places people will just understand um I met some lovely girls um, who I got chatting to. Uh, they were asking me about uni and how I'm coping with that. I mean, it's only been a week and I'm not doing very well at pacing. But, <laughs> but I think I'm getting the strategies down a lot better. And um, I think I've got a bit of a headache at the moment. And as you can tell, I'm not quite, quite there. Um, so I will go through the really interesting bits that I've learned uh, from this weekend on Monday and uh, put them into one video just to kind of um, and put them into this video um, just to give you some helpful advice and then maybe do a QA and a and you can ask me any questions um, and I'll do another Q&A once I'm settling in with uni a bit better just because um, people are like asking me about how I find time to do social activities and how I find time to cook and all that kind of thing feeling well enough so I think that's something you guys want to hear if you do let me know in the comments um, it'd be great um, I do have a headache it has been a long day and we do have dinner soon um, but it's been really good and hopefully worth how I'm gonna feel come Monday <laughs> uh. See you later, guys. Hey guys, sorry I haven't really caught up with you today at all. Look, unintentional zebra clothes, I swear. Um, really, another really good day at the conference, but 
um, it's just been a really long day and I'm completely whacked out. Um, you know, doing like 10 till 4 and then um, 10 till 4 of full on conference and then like near, near on 3 hours in the car. It's only quarter past 8 but I um, we just got back and I've had some a sandwich and I'm just going to get some sleep I think because I'm absolutely absolutely exhausted tomorrow could be very interesting uh, but I've not got class till one so I'm gonna sort everything out in the morning <laughs> good night hey guys so vlogging at the conference wasn't quite as easy as I thought it might be um, because it took a real toll on me um, they were really long days and I didn't feel great so it's been a couple of days and I've let things digest in my mind and got myself feeling a bit better um, so I'm now ready to tell you exactly what I learned during the conference which was brilliant by the way there was a slight issue with the food on the first day considering how many of us in the EDS community have intolerances but by day two that was completely sorted and it ran much better um, I met loads of lovely lovely people some of which had watched my channel which was incredible um, and I hope that I can continue to share any advice or you know just information that helps people and that's what the aim of my channel really is um, so I'm going to tell you the five main things that I learned over the weekend so the first thing I really learned is about the reasons for the new classification now there was a lot, a lot of um, speculation and quite a lot of upset in the new classification system uh, with hypermobile hyper spectrum disorder or uh, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Now we had the wonderful Dr. Kaz Kaz talk us through the new classification and the only real reason that the change has been made because people are using so many different terms completely interchangeably, is so that they can do research in the future. Now, the real reason is because they want to find the gene that is causing hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. A lot of the population do have hypermobility and they can have problems, and they can have a lot of problems associated with connective tissues, but they really want to find the gene. So it, with the new classification, they will do further research on the people in the HEDS category so they can try and find this gene that's causing everyone all these problems and hopefully then find some good treatment. So it's not taking away anyone's diagnosis at all. If you've been diagnosed um, as Danlos syndrome, that is your diagnosis and keep with that. If your diagnosis has got confused over the years, you know, go with what? signifies to you what you've got you just won't be able to take part in any future research if you've not been diagnosed under the new 2017 classification with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome that's all it's really simple and not feeling like you're part of the same community you were you absolutely are it's just so that they can do more research and more definite research to try and help find some answers. The management at the moment is still identical, so it really makes no difference. The second big thing I learned was about nutrition and EDS. Now, obviously, I um, changed my diet rather thoroughly um, to try and help battle my, my EDS, so I'm really interested in this topic. Um, but basically, they're they're just wanting to do more research on it again and they need people under this new classification to be able to do that research. So basically what they showed us is some um, vitamin deficiencies, what they look like against Ehlers-Danlos symptoms and it was scary how similar they are. And the thing is we can be the low side of normal but it might be that someone with EDS needs a hell of a lot more of a certain vitamin or mineral to be able to um, have less symptoms. So some of the examples were vitamin C and B12 and iron and magnesium. If you look them up they'll definitely ring true with your EDS symptoms. 
The third thing I learned, and this is a really big one to me, was all about pacing. Now the word pacing gets thrown out there and no one really knows what it means and it's always easier said than done, right? But this is what stuck with me with the pacing and it really makes sense and it's swap, don't stop. Because with me and pacing, I get really frustrated when I'm in the middle of something and I have to stop doing it. So I just carry on and carry on until I feel unwell, which is not good at all. It's a complete boom and bust system that I'm doing much better at but have to get out of. With swap, don't stop, you're just using a different set of muscles but you're not completely stuck in what you're doing. So say for example, you've been typing on your computer for an hour, that's using your concentration and your hands, you go and do some physio exercises with your legs. So you're not stopping doing anything and getting caught up in watching TV and curling up in bed. You're still doing something productive but not using the same muscles i.e. brain and hands to legs so that when you're once you're done with your physio your brain and your hands can kind of rest but your legs are tired so you get to sit back down that was one of the best pieces of advice i think i took from the weekend the fourth thing i learned this weekend is really about my own personal mental well-being um, it was funny because what the guy that was coming up and speaking as a psychologist in regards to eds and pain management was the guy that i'd paid a hell of a lot of money to that I hadn't really thought helped at all and sent me even into more problems um, because I'd spent so much money on it. But I realised when he was speaking how much of what he said still sat with me today and how I'd actually implemented it without realising it in my own life. Um, so the mindfulness I now use and I don't catastrophize as much, I'm not as hopeless, I'm going with what I've got and and keeping with it you know i do get lonely i do get anxious but i'm nowhere near as bad as i was before that experience so i think sticking to ways that help your mental health is really beneficial um, so for me it's been headspace and i've nearly done 90 days in a row of headspace and mindfulness and that's really helped me and it's helped me get into a better routine and have a better night's sleep and all these things that can really really help. Also with that it's just getting rid of unhelpful thoughts and realising that that's all they are. Thoughts are either helpful or unhelpful and before I was having a lot of thoughts and I still do that aren't helpful you know so if I don't believe them then they're not true, they're just unhelpful thoughts. If I try and focus on the helpful thoughts, then I can get through things much easier. But there's also this notion of acceptance. I think when I was seeing this doctor, I hadn't accepted what I was going through. This was pre-surgery, you know, and I think surgery almost helped in me having to accept this, of this is who I am, this is what I've got, and I've got to do my best with it. And I think it's really important that you can accept that and learn to live with it rather than butting heads of living against your illness. The final thing I learned about having EDS um, is a lot of our joint problems are due to not knowing where our body is in space. Um, so it can be especially hard if you're trying to do an exercise and you don't know where you are or how far your joint is. Um, and I find that especially with my knees because I'm really focusing on my balance and my core strength at the moment. And I'm trying to stand on one leg and my knee's going in like this. So I do that every day walking around without realising, but it's trying to pull yourself back into a normal um, space and not go further. Than we can. Because, and that's why we're so clumsy, because we just don't know where our bodies are, because they go too far. I just thought that was interesting. Uh, it's not particularly helpful. <laughs> I did also get some really cool things at the conference. Um, so two of my favourite speeches were from the occupational therapist, Joe Southall, and the wonderful Hannah Ensor of Stickman Communications. I've shown you some of Hannah's uh, products in the past, my Stickman Communication cards, which I keep in my bag, or in my What's in My Bag video. 
And these are some wristbands that I'm going to be trying out. Uh, it's a traffic light system. So it's got today is a good day, kind of, this isn't a great day, but it's not the worst day, and then this is a really rough day. Uh, so I'm going to try and talk about these with my classmates and my lecturers, so I can try and signify when is a good day and when everything's too much, and if I leave, I just need to. So I think they'll be a really useful tool. Um, and then we have this. Ooh, it's a mystery. I haven't even opened this yet. So this is the box. Um, and it's all in nice paper as well. A little note. And then... This is the book on EDS that everyone has been raving about. I'm interested to read it and find out more and I will probably do a video on that. Um, all the interesting things I found out about this after I read through it. Um, it was a really great weekend and I met so many great people and it was nice to be in a room and feel normal I guess. Um, and also just have so many of the things that the professionals are saying ringing true with you. Um, I think that was especially true of my mum as well, um, who's kind of very new to this, but definitely does have it herself. Um, and it's definitely where mine has come from, so it's really interesting. Yeah, the conference was great, and I can't wait to maybe get to go again someday and meet some more of you guys. Um, couple of videos that are going to be coming up. I'm doing, it is now Dysautonomia Awareness Month, so I'm going to be doing a Living with a Dysautonomia Awareness video. If you'd like to get involved, please message me at any of the social media in the description. I'd love to have you in the video. And I'm also going to be doing a Q&A about going to uni with a chronic illness. Uh, so if you've got any questions, please, please, please get in touch um, because I'd love to answer your questions about going to university with a chronic illness, how to get there, how to, you know, anything, anything you want. <laughs> um, just drop me a line at any of my social media if you want to ask a question for that video, because uh, that's something that everyone keeps asking, you know, how on earth do you do it? Well, I want to share it with you so that you guys can have the same experience that I'm having currently. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. If you are already a subscriber, drop me a comment of a video you would like to see soon and I will try my best to get it done for you. I make all my videos for you lovely people so I can hopefully help some people out and spread awareness for these conditions. Um, spoons and love to you guys and I will see you soon. Bye.